Hi, welcome to Mathematics with Tom. I am Tom, and today we are going to take a look at the difference between the row picture and the column picture of the matrix equation AX equals B. This is section 2.1 in our text, so here we go. So this is section 2.1, and we'll call it the row and column pictures. The row and column pictures. Okay, here we go. So we need some vectors. Let's start with this. Let's talk about let. Let u be the vector 2, 1, V, this will be the vector 1, minus 1, and um, and B is going to be 4, minus 1. So what this means is this means that a linear combination of the vector u and the vector v gives me the vector b. So let's write that. Now, um, for this example, it's going to work out nicer. Normally, I would have my, my vector. Normally, when we have ax equals b, sometimes it depends on kind of the context of a problem. But oftentimes we write the most technically correct way to write the vector x is x1, x2. Uh, but for this, but for this example and for the sake of illustration, which will become clear shortly, I'm going to just use x1. We'll write x and for oops, that's an x2 for x. Oops. For x2, we're just going to write y. So the vector x has the components x and y. Those are our scalars. So a linear combination of u and v to give me b would be x times u plus y times v equals, well, let's write this out. This is x times the vector u, which is 2, 1, plus the scalar y times the vector 1, minus 1. And that, that is equal to the vector b, which is 4, negative 1. Now, in our last video, we saw that a linear combination can then be written as the matrix equation, AX equals B. The, our vectors become the columns of the matrix A. Our scalars, our scalars X and Y, become the components of the vector X, and B stays as B. So let's take this one step further. And let's write this as the matrix equation, uh, 2, 1, 1, minus 1, times x, which is x, y, equals b, 4, negative 1. So here's our matrix equation. We're going to look at it in two different ways. The first way is the column. The, the column picture
The column picture is to look at the linear combination of x times 2, 1 plus y times b, which is 1 minus 1, equals b, which is 4 negative 1. Okay? That's one way to multiply ax equals b. It's just right here. But the other way, the other way that we looked at was this. And that's the row picture. The row picture. The row picture comes from the utilizing the dot product to multiply a matrix times a vector. And we said that the row picture is the same as the first row. Well, the first row is 2, 1 and then dotting it with the vector x. And that's, uh, I'm going to write that down here. So this is 2, 1, and then we're going to dot it with x. Well, let's see what that would give me. Um, if I take 2, 1 and I dot it with the vector x, that's going to give me 2x plus 1y is equal to the first component of b, which is 4. And the, when I take my second row, which is 1, negative 1, the second row of a, second row of a, and I dot that with the vector x, well, what am I going to get? Well, I'm going to have a 1 times x plus negative 1 times y. So let's write that. So this is going to be 1x minus 1y, and that's going to equal the second component in b. That's the row picture. This, at this point in our mathematics, this is just a system of linear equations. We have two lines, and the solution, if there is one, is where the intersection of these two lines. So let's take this and these two equations, and we're going to graph them and see if we can find the solution by graphing. All right, here we go. So let's start this. This is the row picture. Okay, so this is the row picture. Okay, I'm going to make my, my graph here try to be really accurate so that it works out nicely. There's my x-axis and my y-axis, and, and then let's, let's mark this off. How about, we'll go one, two, three. And let's continue this in the other directions as well. One, two, oh, um, oh, I didn't leave a lot of space, so that's okay. I think this will work out just fine. You know what we can do is we'll just make, we'll rescale our y-axis. So here's one, two, three, four. That'll work. Okay, so now let's graph these. Um, you can solve for y, find the slope, rise over run, but let's do this. If x is zero, then this term goes away. That implies that y is four. So x is zero, y is four. I'm gonna grab some, um, I have these pretty chalks, so let's take advantage of this. So I have a, a y-intercept at 4. And then let's use the same process. If y is 0, x is 2. y is 0, x is 2. That's going to give me another point right there. So let's, um, I'm going to try to freehand this. If you have graph paper or straight edge, um, I'll take the time. Make a nice picture. Okay, so there's my there's my line. Let's just clean it up a bit. Okay, and then let's graph our next line. Let's use the same process, and that was we say, well, if x is zero, then y would be one. X is zero, y is one. So let's put a dot there. 
And then if y is 0, x is minus 1. So let's put a dot here. And then, so now if I connect these dots, which I'm going to do, when I connect these dots, notice, oops, let's see, let's see where these dots are going to take us. Now, question is, if I drew this correctly, and I've been trying, if I drew this correctly, that looks to me, that looks a lot like the point one, two. So I'm gonna just hope. I, I'm hoping I don't have to go through difficult algebra to solve these. But I think that that point of intersection is one, two. Well, let's check. Let's do a check. So, um, check. Let's check, that's our solution. So uh, let's put the, we'll put this, uh, to, oh, I'm sorry, we're gonna put one, two into each equation and make sure the equation holds true. So this is two times x we said is one plus one times two. And sure enough, that's two and two, that is four. So it works in our first equation. Let's check our second one. That says that one times one minus one times two. Well, let's try that. That's one. Take away two. That's going to be negative one. Ah, oh, negative one, which is what we want. So that's our solution. So the solution is the intersection of two lines in a single point. That's the row picture. But let's take a look now. Let's take a look at the column picture. Come over here. Um, I'm going to bring my chalk with me. And okay, so let's do this. Let's draw so column picture. start this again. Let's start again with a nice graph. So I'm going to lay this out. The vertical line here. There's my axes. Uh, let's make a horizontal axis as well. Hopefully yours is a little straighter. Uh, I got a wobble in there. there. Maybe if you just make it bolder, it'll straighten out. So um, I'm going to mark these off. That looks like about the right amount. I don't think I need to go any further than four. I don't even think I need negative one, but it does make the graph look prettier. Let's a little more even. All right, now, so remember what the column picture is. The column picture is the linear combination of the vectors. So let's draw this. Our first vector is 2, 1. Our first vector is 2, 1, and we'll kind of, we'll use the same kind of coloring I did. So the vector 2, 1. So let's see if I can connect that, make it nice and straight, provide clarity for us. And we Hmm. Okay, there's my vector 2, 1. Or we, we already gave it a name. We said this is the vector u. And now let's graph. We have a vector v. v is 1 minus 1. That's right here. Let's graph v. So v is 1 minus 1. Let's come over to 1, drop down. So v. Oh, my chalk just broke. Okay, that is my vector V. Now we have one more, we have one more vector in this case. That's the vector B. What we're trying to find now, and keep the, it's a different change in perspectives, we're looking for scalars, like how many u's are needed and how many y's are needed to get a b. So let's draw our b, and maybe that idea will present itself. So b, b is 
all the way over here at four, and then down one. So if I bring this line over, oh, that's a long line. Um, whew. Just trying to draw that one straight. Okay, here we go. Here's my B. Oh, I think that came, I think B is, it's gonna work for us. There's B. Now, the question though, and let's see if we can just see this. In, in this, in the row picture, we could see the intersection. Let's see if we can see the path. The path. So I'm going to stick with this, um, with my white here. Notice I have two vectors to work with. I have u, which always says you travel to right and move up one. I have v, which says I move right one and down one. So let's think about this. If I was at u, my first guess is to try some v's. Let's see. If I take, excuse me, if I take v and I move right one down one. So let's go right one, right one down one. Oh, that would take me to right there. Oh, look at, I think I see this. Do you see that? So that is a V, right there. I'm gonna do these in my white. Look at that, that is a V. So I'm gonna label it. I can already see the answer. If I take another V, meaning I move right one, down one, there it is, I land at V. And then there, there, the solution presents itself. So by, there's another V. So what was the solution? The solution says that if you take one U and you add one, two Vs to it, you'll get B. And sure enough, we do. And remember that, now this was the one, the solution that I thought that was most visible to me. You may have seen the other one. You may have said, well, wait a minute, what if I, Went down here, I went down another one. So, oops, let me put my scale on here. You may have thought, well, what if I traveled, what if I traveled another V and then added a U? Well, that would be over one, down one, but then I'd have to go two right, one, I have to go one, two right, one up, and there it is. So if I travel, there's again, one, two Vs first, and then I could travel one U, and there, there's the parallelogram picture. So that is the difference between the row solution, or the row picture, the column solution, and the column picture. In our next video, we're gonna try this. We're gonna try this with a three-dimensional picture. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.